Oh, so good. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's that's awesome. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's so good. Oh my god. So good. Oh, so good. So cool. So so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Wait, when you said like, oh, I'll make a haircut, I'm like, okay, I guess we'll wind up having a very like simple short hair, You're like, and then you get that out. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to you, but I started with a sketch of the textures. This was really fast. It didn't mm. do Photoshop. So I knew I need to have different densities for the hairs so that when the cards stack together, there's depth on them. Because we need to because we're working with flat cards, we need to give it depth so that we fake the idea of 3D. And then I divided in, in them into three types of densities. So I knew I have to have the densest one, which is almost uh, not see-through because there's so many hairs. And then I thought this would be for long hair. Then I need something for the dreadlocks. Then I need flyaways. Um, and then I need short hair. And this can be the whatever um, the hair that feeds into the uh, braids that starts on the head and then goes into the braid, that segment. Mm. So this was the initial thought. This was really fast. It was like five minutes, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you really plan out, like before you even spend time creating the texture itself, you just go in Photoshop and you're like, okay, I expect to have this, 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 this. So you're really planning out from like the densest cards you think you'll need to the sparsest cards, I suppose, that you will yeah. need. In general, like for someone who's like looking at a simpler haircut, who's kind of thinking through, okay, how many different strands of hair do I need to create? Do you have like, do you go by like a general rule? Like how do you usually figure that out? Is there a number that kind of always kind of averages around? Like we can see here, we can count one, two, three, there's like 60, maybe 20 different individual clumps of hair here. Let's say it's a, it's a bob hairstyle, right? Because that's easy, it's just straight hair that is um, as short as about where the neck starts, where the you know, the skull ends, that's where the hair ends. And maybe there's a bit of, well, usually there's a bit of a fringe. So we've got that straight hair. So for that one, I would probably go for around maybe two cards on each density. So that makes it, uh, it would be two of the densest ones so that we can have one that's wide and one that's thin. Because the thin ones are my favorite because they fit everywhere. You have a gap somewhere, just put one of these, it's done. Mm, that's interesting. And, okay, yeah. Mm, these, the, yeah, the thin ones are great, and then we need something to put on top of it. So this one, um, we see, we see through this one, and we see that one. This one casts shadows on that one and gives it a bit of depth. Mm -hmm. So we have two of those, and then we can have two of those that are even um, less strands of hair and go on top of this one. So then this one with this one on top, with the next one on top, and then we have a clump of hair. Ta-da! Well, mm -hmm. imaginary one now, but so yeah, like, two each of them and then sorry and then um yeah. we can have some extra flyaways and some shorter ones for the hairlines that are just um shorter ones that feed into the longest one to make a nice transition on the hair so okay. we can have uh i don't know up to 12 16 could you could easily make a nice haircut with those numbers there's like the very yeah. kind of very primary ish very dense one then on top of yeah. that you get those kind of breakdown ones that are there to cast a shadow um, and sort of really add variety and kind of break that repetitive, re repetitiveness that you're going to get. Yeah. And then on top of that, I guess you have more details. More details. Yeah, yeah, more detailing to everything. And then you have number four, which is maybe that very extremely wispy, very flyaway thing, which is like just individual hairs almost that would be on, on a plane, right? Yeah, the flyaways um, are oops, actually most of them are these. Oh, they're super the thin that, there. Yeah, 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 the ones that kind of break the silhouette and um, catch the light. If there's a rim light somewhere, they, they catch the light and we put okay. the texture back on. Okay. So you can see them better. Yeah. And then, like, I can see in all of these densities that we've defined, you seem to have wide and thin, wide and thin, wide and thin, you know? Each haircut has to be treated in a separate way, right? But you kind of wind up having like yeah. almost eight planes. You have wide, dense, thin, dense, 
wide breakdown, thin breakdown, in a way, kind of, yep. you know, like, as a bit of a general rule, you know, that's kind of the basic yep. sort of schema that you can expect to have. Look, this is so. This is oh. the densest one. Oh, that's that's awesome. Okay, yeah. Really? Oh, that's great. That's so good. Rotate this a bit, so you can. It's not. They're not really see through. You can't see through them much. You know. They're very very dense, and then when, on top of it. Yeah, go for it. Oh? Go for it. No, 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 go for it. Then there's the mid layer. This is actually very helpful with oh, the, making God. the lots as well. The mid the layer is such a big difference. Yeah, it just adds detail to everything and you can fill in gaps that were left. But yeah, this is the mid one. Okay. And then there's the outer one, which has even less strands of hair on it. See, this one only has a few, for example. Mm -hmm. And it kind of breaks the flow as well. Mm -hmm. Like on this clump, for example, so this one, the, the general... Uh, shape of it is that it's going this way and then it's flowing down but with the outer one I kind of broke it and I made a bit of variation on it it's like the hair was sliding down I don't know if that makes sense yeah it kind of does yeah 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 it's like every level that you unhide I'm like that is so good it looks so beautiful and then you unhide the next level and it's like oh my god it looks so good like but like it's funny because like when you were at that kind of either like primary stage or like dense stage you know it's like it kind of reminds me it's like that's kind of almost ps2 level hair almost kind of you know maybe that's even a bit denser than what we had then but it, like this is kind of more or less what we had a, a few console generations ago you know and i think mm. ps3 maybe is when you can like start to see the appearance of those kind of breakdown hairs you know but it adds so much texture although like you know the thing that's also kind of makes me realize looking at this haircut right now is that just at this kind of dense stage, you know, like you figured out at this stage, you've already blocked in all of your major volumes. You've already solved, it feels like, most of the, um, not necessarily intersections, but the places where you could see the scalp through there. You fixed all of the kind of holes that you had in there, you know. I assume that it mm. takes a long time. I know we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves again, but it's just so interesting what you're showing us right now, you know. Like... You can really break this down, and I assume that that is your approach. Like you really go through each step, one at a time, and and but like this primary stage does seem to me to me to be like the base on which everything else rests. You know, like this yeah. has to be solid before you move on. Yeah, yeah, it is. The blockout is very very important. I mm. take my time with the blockout because everything that comes on top of it, it it's the reflection of that blockout. So it's like having a sketch. If you have a a bad sketch and you continue and you keep on polishing that you're polishing a piece of turd <laughs> so the sketch needs to be good so that it then it's just everything comes naturally and it's just easy mm -hmm. it's like be building a house on a bad foundation it doesn't work very well and just just cause problems along the way and it makes things more difficult so for me blockout is uh, very important because that's when I set things right hmm. and then it's just easy it's just putting things on top of it <laughs> you make it sound so simple <laughs> yeah it, it's not difficult just once you get the hang of it it's just it, yeah it, it's not difficult you just need to ha get the hang of it and do it a few times yeah 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 oh, so, so yeah see the, the yeah the so good the oh, God, mid -layer. yeah, yeah it's mid -layer. following yeah. yeah, the other one. It really, like, it's really the mid-layer, like, the job of the mid-layer is really to break that feeling of individual planes that you can see, right? It's, it's like, it's like mm. that, that under layer, that kind of dense layer, it's like, it looks good, you can see the flow is great, but you can clearly tell that they are individual planes that are all kind of very separated there. But it's really when you unhide that mid-layer that the hair really comes alive to me, you know? It's really when everything starts to really look like a real haircut you really see that separate the or uh, rather you stop seeing the clear separation between the individual hair clumps and everything starts to look way more organic 
Uh, it's a very, very yeah. important step, it feels like, yeah. Mm. But you're not changing the volumes. You're not really adding coverage. It's really just there to make it more organic. That mm -hmm. mid layer kind of thing. Yep. So cool. So, so cool. Mm, then the outer one. Oh, so good. So, like, if you were to define what is the primary goal of the third layer, like, what would that be? To to break thing down, things down even more. And if I, I really like this and the flyaways, see how there's these huge gaps between the clumps of hair, which we we get in our hair, because it just clumps, especially the, when the hair gets dirtier it clumps together more and we get these gaps which are really really nice because they read from a distance as well you don't end up with a block of hair when you have those so they're they're really important and what mm -hmm. i like with the outer layer is just to put some detail on them like on this one Ta -da! there's uh -huh. more stuff yeah and then this as well you don't realize what's missing until you unhide the third layer and then you realize, oh yeah, all of that detail was kind of missing from there. Yeah, because you, you're really starting with that third layer to really get that feeling that there are individual hairs in there that are really kind of flowing mm. and, and, and sort of, um, you know, a bit rebellious or not following what everything else is kind of doing there. Yeah. And breaking the flow a bit of everything just work because I'm always thinking yeah. the hair is somehow very organic or imagining a, a cloth simulation or a hair simulation and there's gravity and it just it slides down it's just it's I don't know sort of like um, not fluids but it's it slides it moves it's not a rigid thing so I'm, I'm just I'm always thinking how, if I can put that in there somehow, suggest it, then that's great. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. And then the flyaways? The flyaways. <laughs> it's that extra little, extra tiny little detail that just makes it all look so much more interesting. Yeah, these are the first that get deleted on uh, the flyaways, on lots. On the lots, when it's yeah. like like this far away, yeah, you don't see them. You don't see them. Okay, so that's, that's... I find it um, just one thing. I find it useful when the mesh is separated into these parts. It makes it makes it easier with the lots. Yeah, yeah, that makes complete sense there. So let's go back to the texture creation. Then. So we 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 can see like each individual kind of level of detail. So this was one of the. Uh, first iterations that I did and you can see that I, don't, I didn't entirely respect the sketch that I did but the sketch was a start for me that was the start point mm -hmm. and then I've got these I've got the densest ones these two I thought th these would be good for long hair and for the shorter one this for the fringe these will be for the dreadlocks now on these I've changed them I will show you um, two more textures that, um, for the until the final one well, one more and then the final one. But for example, on this one, I thought this will get stretched a lot. So this strong S shape will be stretched. But mm. the problem with this was that this uh, this um, line here, it's almost horizontal. So when that gets stretched, you end up with um, a, a strand of hair that is very, very thick. And that's right. not nice. Yeah, OK. So later on, I changed that. OK. Then this is the next version, and you can see I've I've refined it more. This is this one was pretty rough to give me a start to work with, and we've we've got those densities. I still kept them. So we've got the densest one, the mid one that is more see-through, and then the other ones that are even more see-through. Mm -hmm. And then as I edited, I still kept that. I've got the the dense one, and the thin one that is the equivalent of it because I don't really like squishing it because you can easily squish this one right. to get. A thin card but then the hairs on it if it's on a close-up well this particular one which is buried underneath all the cards won't really be visible but i still don't like it because when it gets squished the strands of hair they get really really thin mm -hmm. and or if you get do that for example on one of these 
because alpha is still creating issues sometimes they the hair some of the hairs might even disappear on it just looks wrong right? so i try to keep the the hair strands uniform across the head i don't like having some strands of hair that are just like one size and then on top of all of them you get one of these cars that have the strands like double the width of the other ones because normal hair natural hair is not really like that we have a bit of variation you, every now and then you find the odd uh, strand of hair that is thicker than, than the rest but generally we have pretty even strands mm -hmm. so i try to maintain that mm. and yeah i kept different types of densities and i knew that these need to stack on those and these on top of these and then i've got the flyaway ones this wiggly one was meant for the dreadlocks um, to give um, okay. uh, the um, edge of them there. Yeah. Like those, those. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like your outer layer for the dreadlocks there. Yeah. And this was the final sheet. This this is the end. This is what end I ended up with. And you okay. can see I've removed that. I didn't actually use the previous version for the dreadlock here. It was, right. I didn't use it. So I just added more flyaways. 